The basic trait of human nature is curiosity. It is what defines us as a species. No matter what part of our beautiful planet we live in, we always look up to the skies and wonder, admiring the vastness of the cosmos. Asking about our place in this magnificent world, could we really be alone in the emptiness of space? A spark of life that went against the natural order of entropy? Or are we just part of a greater scheme, like a tiny cogwheel in a world far more advanced than us? We asked ourselves these questions, but we never sat back and thought if we were prepared to receive real answers. Alas, our romantic view of the universe would be forgotten under the terror of the horrific truth. I guess H.P. Lovecraft was correct, right from the start. In his cult classics, he wrote about gods so powerful and terrible in nature that they dreamed the world into existence and created humanity as a toy to pass their time through the eons. We were lucky that we were so small, so useless to them, so insignificant that they didn't even care to look down to us puny mortals. Should they ever choose to, though, mankind would be reduced to ash in the blink of an eye. Sometimes I think that the man had true visions of the reality outside our blissful ignorance. It wasn't writing fiction, it was writing history. I'm getting ahead of myself. I am an astrophysicist. I work for the European Space Agency, or the ESA for short. I would like not to reveal my name for the sake of anonymity, but I am pretty sure that I would be discovered sooner or later. Since my university days, I wanted to be a, a little bit different. So when everyone shows their thesis, fascinations with galaxies and nebulas, I decided to work on the more subtle things. I specialized on voids. These are dark places of the world with a very small number of galaxies inside them. I figured out that it would be the future of research, since I would have less competition. Most people wanted to study stars, quasars, either way. So I had an open field and a lot of opportunities to discover. After graduating, I started studying the Boots subvoid, and to this day, I'm still working on that project. It's a huge void with a diameter of about 330 million light years. Voids occur naturally throughout space, but it's really rare to see an emptiness so big, hosting only about 60 galaxies, when statistically there should be around 2,000 of them, hence the name Super Void. I remember the day when I started to realize the truth. It was my first day back to work. After a well-earned one month of summer vacation, me and my team had been observing a galaxy inside the supervoid. The galaxy had a strange tendency of dimming and lighting back up every few weeks, but every time when it got brighter, it lost some of its luminosity, never fully returning to its former glory again. That night, the galaxy was nowhere to be found. My colleagues hadn't noticed anything. We had agreed that they would go on with their personal projects, and that we'd look at the measurements taken while I was on leave together on the day of my return. But of course, the measurements read nothing. It was like the galaxy wasn't there in the first place. Like it had just dimmed out of existence. But whole galaxies just don't disappear like that. We composed a relatively short paper, stating our insane findings, and we started working on a theory discussing what could be behind the strange situation. In a few days, I was contacted by the big dogs themselves. It was NASA. A trip was scheduled in minutes, and in two days' time, I was in a briefing room where I was about to learn that all of my theories about the Boots supervoid were wrong. Before anything else, I had to sign a contract, swearing complete secrecy about the issue. I was burning with curiosity, so I obliged. You probably have heard about the theoretical civilization types, the scientist asked me. Of course I had. The Kardashev scale is a ranking system of intelligent beings, based on what amount of power they had command over. The maximum is thought to be type 3, with beings able to control the full energy potential of the galaxy they inhabit, 
humans were ranked at a lowish 0.7, not even being able to take advantage of our planet's output. I nodded to the scientist, and he continued. Now imagine a civilization so evolved that it has transcended even that extraordinary limit. A species so advanced that it can manipulate and absorb multiple galaxies in their entirety. This is what we're dealing with here. It looks like Boots' void is empty, but in fact it is full. The beings living in that area of space are so powerful that they absorb and use anything in their path. This is the sole reason why the Boots' super void exists and appears to be so vast, so empty. I shook my head in disbelief. Such a concept was nearly inconceivable. Only a god could reach such power, because god is the only description I could give them, and there was more to come to my troubled mind. Have we ever had contact with them? I naively asked. I knew that our radio waves had barely left our stellar neighborhood, but I hoped we may have reached and decoded some of their messages. They transmit in thousands of wavelengths, but their languages are so advanced that they seem to transcend the limit of time. They speak to the past, the present, the future simultaneously. We can only decrypt tiny parts of their pandemonium of signals. But we know that either way, they don't even address beings like us. Their message is a repeating pattern. One that's been going on for years. It's, uh, it's an SOS. They're asking for allies because they're at war. And they're losing. A female colleague of his continued. They're searching for civilizations of the same caliber as them to help them. But they seem to completely ignore less advanced beings. To them, we're ants, helplessly running around their feet, completely useless in the grand scheme of things. They couldn't care less about whether we live or perish, and they would gladly destroy our solar system and the entire Milky Way if it meant that they'd get more power in their quest to save what they believe worthy because even they are fighting something. Something even stronger than them. Wait, I asked. When did you learn this? What horrible power could be stronger than them? The woman spoke again. We knew all the way back in 2008, when we detected the strongest gamma ray burst that was ever recorded. We understood it was a quasar-sized targeted missile of pure energy, which could pierce through an entire galaxy but it had no effect on its target. After that, they showed me a simulation on the projector. The Milky Way and the entire supercluster of galaxies where it resides seemed to be accelerating extremely fast to a certain region where other superclusters were also heading, seemingly drawn in by an unknown force. This region was the target of the gamma ray burst. If we're correct said the scientist who had first spoken. The entity living there could swallow galaxy clusters in a few months, making them the closest thing to the ruler of the universe. And it seems this is exactly what they lust for. And the stronger they become, the faster our inescapable doom. Because at this rate, they'd be able to have enough power to absorb even a supercluster, like it was a milkshake in a glass. They won't stop until they get what they want, and we are directly on their path to it. I... I don't know what to do with all this. It feels so hopeless. Since then, I've been working with NASA to think of something that would... ever save us. But there's nothing we could do. It's hopeless. If we were able to upgrade as higher types of civilization, we should have done it already. There's no time left for us. We'll never become strong enough to protect ourselves from the true forces of the cosmos. We'll just hide in our caves like critters too weak to even look into the eyes of our impending doom. Not with the pride we once had. Now, I do wonder sometimes about why these unimaginably strong beings lust for even more. And then I remember how humans fight over the breadcrumbs of tiny planets of zero significance. Killing and enslaving our brothers in search of energy sources so primitive that they would be laughable. But it seems that everyone desires power. And the more of it you have, the stronger the addiction. 
You can't imagine the level of ambition when the prize is total domination of the world. I've sworn secrecy, but I have to break the silence. Either way, it feels like it doesn't really matter. With the powers in play, we could be gone in a million years. Or just ten. And we won't even know when or how it would happen. But humans are curious. They have to know the truth. It is, after all, the only sense of control we have. So, there you have it. We are not alone in the universe. I wish we were. We are not important to the world. In fact, we are so powerless and meaningless. The monsters that will eventually destroy us won't even hear our screams. And the next time you look up at the skies, pray. Pray that to the gods of the universe, ones that we are so insignificant to, that they never fix their eye upon us. Pray that we'll never be important enough to gain their attention. It's our only hope of surviving. Just a little bit more. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and we are back after Halloween. So, I want to give a big thank you to my Patreons. Those uh, specifically are the ones that are in the description. And Joey Gilbert, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chumpinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Buddy Burroughs, Stephen Van House, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kao, Caleb Dougal, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Mewmeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Alex, Steampunk Sinner, The Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. If you guys would like to join them, you can always head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. Even helping with $1 actually helps keep me alive. So a big thank you to all of you who are there from $1 all the way up to however much that you guys give. Thank you. I appreciate you guys subscribing and checking back with the channel every single day because, dear Lord help me, we are on daily uploads, meaning new horror stories from me here at Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube or Mr. Creepypasta on Spotify. Sweet dreams, kids.